Occidental Petroleum have been one of the most popular oil and gas stocks that a lot of retail investors have exposure to, mainly after Warren Buffett started buying Occidental, and he's been buying Occidental pretty much every single month. He bought a lot of them in December, and I believe he bought a few shares in 2024 so far. He owns around 34% of the company, and he has a written agreement to acquire up to 50% on Occidental. So I don't think Warren Buffett is done buying the stock, and a lot of you have been asking me about it i try not to analyze oil and gas stocks as i'm not too comfortable with them i tend to invest in royalty companies and just like tpl and many other royalty stocks but in this video i'm gonna give you my analysis on occidental petroleum and this is a stock that i own i have some occidental right now and i have a strategy that i've been doing on occidental for over the last two years that i'm gonna share with you in the end of the video now in terms of occidental i'm just gonna focus on the latest acquisition and this is big news for the company, over $12 billion of deals to acquire Crown Rock. This is another the acquisitions they made. Some people really like this acquisition. Some people are not comfortable with it at all, mainly because of the debt. I'm going to talk about the acquisition a little bit. Now, looking on the surface, it does help Occidental a lot. It increases their locations by over 1,250 locations. Over a lot of them are below $60 per barrel, and 750 of them are below $40 a barrel break even for Occidental, below $40. I mean, this is pretty amazing for this acquisition. It's going to add low-cost locations to Occidental. This is something that Occidental needs as it's getting rid of a lot of the higher cost for the portfolio and is entering more lower-cost projects. In terms of the free cash flow in general, it's expected to increase their free cash flow per share because there's going to be some dilution. This is why we're using per share metrics. But free cash flow per share is expected to increase around 28% if WTI, which is crude oil pretty much stays around you know 70 dollars per barrel now this is a pretty big deal 28 percent increase after the acquisition if we get to 75 dollars per barrel then the increase would be around 25 percent now this is pretty amazing if we use the four dollars and 22 cents free cash flow per share this would give you around 13 times free cash flow for occidental at 70 dollars per barrel and i personally believe oil is ultimately going a little bit higher than 70 dollars per barrel at 75 it would drop up to something like 11 times free cash flow and as you know oil prices increase the free cash flow multiple will drop but 13 times free cash flow is not cheap for something like occidental i mean i remember these stocks like exxon mobil and chevron they used to trade at much lower free cash flow multiples but it was before 2020 and before we had the massive rotation into energy stocks in 2021 this is when they started trading a little bit closer to their previous long-term historical averages but it's trading around 13 times free cash flow and this free cash flow is extremely sensitive to oil prices and i would expect occidental to be a little bit more volatile into the future than it was before and this is an amazing uh, you know charge from occidental and it shows you that there's over a 260 million dollar free cash flow change per one dollar per barrel in oil prices so if oil goes up one dollars only for 2024 they can make an extra 260 million of annual free cash flow if it goes down one dollar then they can make 260 million dollars free cash flow less than they were supposed to make this could be good if oil is going up but it's not good at all if oil is going down this is why a lot of companies hedge their exposure and i'm not sure how the hedging works with occidental but this is extremely sensitive to inflation now in terms of the debt this is what investors are concerned about because occidental already has a lot of debt they have been paying it off from over 48 billion dollars of debt to only 18 billion right now and 18 billion is still a lot of debt for the size of the company occidental petroleum and debt is expected to skyrocket from 18 billion to 28 billion in q1 of 2024 after the acquisition is done but the company has a target of around 15 billion dollars and they are planning on uh, pretty much divesting four and a half to six billion dollars of assets within the next 18 months this is going to help reduce the debt i don't personally believe they're going to get to 15 billion maybe not within the next 18 months but they are planning a very rapid and quick deleveraging for occidental and this is pretty good they are trying to get rid of the bad assets and entering more of the higher quality assets low cost uh, break even assets like the ones they recently acquired so i don't personally believe this acquisition is as bad as people believe now what i really didn't like is that they're going to increase the dividend 
dividend by 23%. I know a lot of dividend investors, they've been begging Occidental to increase the dividend. But for me personally, I would have kept the dividend the same and I would have chosen instead to pretty much focus on paying down the debt instead of increasing the dividend. I hate when companies do it, like Disney. Disney is playing a dividend again. It's so focusing on paying down the massive debt and save on interest expense. Occidental's interest expense is $230 million per quarter. This is pretty close to a billion dollars a year in just interest. And this is before the acquisition. After the acquisition, it could be pretty close to $1.2, $1.3 billion of just interest every single year, which is why I believe Occidental should be prioritizing paying down the debt instead of making all these acquisitions and, and you know increasing the dividend. But I think the acquisition makes sense. It's going to increase their free cash flow on a per share basis. This is what matters. So this is pretty good in terms of oil price in general. Ultimately, Occidental is going to follow oil. This is why, again, I'm not a big fan of investing in these stocks for the very long term. I trade them more in the short term for the long term. I tend to buy royalty stocks. Like you could look at a chart of TPL, you know, 20 year chart or a 20 year chart of Franco Nevada of gold and, and silver. And you could see why you know, the business model makes much more sense if it's a royalty company versus the producers and, and all these kind of things, unless they were small caps, of course. But for oil, I mean, oil has so far been holding up around $72. It could go up, it could go down. I mean, it's still sitting on this trend line. We could see what could happen. If it does go below the trend lines, then we have a possibility of oil going down. And if we do hold above it, then we have a possibility of oil going up. I'm not trying to predict oil prices in the video, but Occidental is ultimately going to follow oil. And this is extremely hard to predict, which is why Occidental is extremely hard to value. And this is why I stay away from you know, valuing these stocks. A lot of people like Occidental because of whatever they're doing with the carbon capture plants. Amazon is trying to partner with them in the space. And they, the CEO said they could license up to 1,000 you know, carbon capture plants. This is pretty amazing, but I'm not sure how profitable this could be for them. I'm not sure at all. I mean, I haven't seen much profitability from the carbon capture plants. I mean, I see the potential. I see what the U.S. government and the regulation in the future getting more tight and tight around that. And Occidental could play a key role in the clean energy transition and in, in all these climate goals that many companies have. Occidental can help them. But I'm not sure about the profitability of this area within their industry. This is something we have to wait and see what happens with it. Now, in terms of my strategy with Occidental, this is something that I shared in my 2022 video when I reviewed my best and worst trades of 2022. And I did explain my best trade for 2022, which was selling put spreads on Occidental. I've been selling put spreads below $55 per share for the last 15 or 16 months. I haven't done it every single month. Some months I didn't do it, but I've done it at least 13 or 14 times. And I basically sell these put spreads below $55 per share because $55 has been historically a good support for Occidental because this is where Warren Buffett tends to buy. I mean, yeah, this is maybe not the best value investor kind of play and fundamentals, but this is an opportunity that I've been exploiting for a year and a half, pretty close to two years. And, and even right now, I'm still doing it. I bought Occidental around two weeks ago, and I made around 7% in, in 15 days or 14 days. I mean, some people make 7% an entire year. And this is the whole pattern with Occidental. That's been always, it bounces around 55, and it goes up to 62, and then it goes down to 55, and then it goes up to 62. It's been happening for, I mean, for quite some time for uh, Occidental. But this is where Warren Buffett tends to buy 56, 55, 56, you know, 59, 60. More, a lot of it is 57, 58. So this is around 57, 58. I sell the put spreads around 55 or sometimes I buy at 55 and then I sell around 62. And this is what I've been doing with Occidental Petroleum. This is a pattern that I've been exploiting for a year and a half. I'm not sure when this will stop, but Warren Buffett keeps buying it around 55, 56, 57. And this is what I've been doing and I'm going to continue doing it. Eventually, it's not going to work. I'm going to lose money, which is fine, but I already made a lot. I mean, when I was selling the put spreads, I was making 8 to 10% every single month just selling whenever and every month that I sell these put spreads on Occidental. And if I'm buying it and selling it, I'm making 6 to 8% as in two to three weeks. So I'm, I'm going to continue doing it. And I share more of that stuff in my own investment group. If you're interested in joining, the link in the description. But this was my opinion on Occidental. It's a hard stock to value. Well, I like the acquisition and I wish they did not increase the dividend. But this was just my opinion. It was not financial advice. So thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please press the like button and maybe consider subscribing. So I hope to see you in another video.